what I did here, what I, what I, what I want to sort of convey with this was a number of things. On this side here, we have a picture of um, Defar setting uh, the world record in the 10,000 meter a few years back. And on the other side, we have a picture of someone winning the Maine State High School um, mile championship. And as you can see, the level of the competition doesn't necessarily translate into the quality of the images. Okay, what we'd like to do is take you from something like this to something like that. And the, you know, the people who are operating this camera uh, were the same people who operate our cameras. These, these are both finish links. This is actually the same camera that was used for both of these pictures. Um, these are the people who, who time the world championships and, and time all of the major IAAF Grand Prix games and stuff like that. Um, so it's not like they're not smart people, but um, the point really is that you know getting things right is not is not the province of uh, of the high end people who do the big events, right? I mean, you know, this is something that that, that you can. For me, there's really three factors in, in, in getting good pictures. One is resolution, the second is light, and the other is focus. These are, these are interrelated um, things, as we'll, as we'll see in a minute. Um, but if you can sort of get your head around these three factors, you can, you can get much better pictures than you may be getting at the time. Okay. What I'd like to do is, in order to understand particularly the resolution um, issue, um, we need to understand a little bit about our product line and sort of the, the, the lineage and history of, of our cameras and, and what you may or may not own. Um, this, these are essentially the four Ethernet-based cameras that um, we have ever produced at length. Before this would have been the uh, affectionately known Silver Bullet which some of you own, I'm sure. Um, which was not which was not an Ethernet-based camera. But when we first came out with the Ethernet camera, it was this model. And these, so in the parentheses are, if you look on the serial number on your camera, it'll start with either 50100, 200, 300, or 400. And this basically is just first generation, second generation, third generation, fourth generation of the camera line. And <clears throat> there are other differences between these cameras. Than, than I've shown in this table, but the differences here allow you to sort of very quickly understand, you know, what really separates these different camera lines. Okay. Uh, the best way to think about it is sort of like the data needs to come in the front end, it needs to get processed and pass out the back end. Okay, they're they're essentially the old cam, the older cameras. Um, had 10 base T backhands, so that's a um, you know just a original, if you will, Ethernet um, specification. And the the newer models have 100 base T backhands. The more interesting thing from a from a resolution perspective is is the front end. And the the original camera, which some of you may still have, 5100s. Um, use what, what's called a collinear sensor. Okay, and what this means, and I'm going to show you a picture of this in the next in the next slide. What this means is that all the pixels on the sensor are all in one row. Okay. And the second generation camera, which is probably the most common camera in the field at this point, the 50200 uses what's called a trilinear camera, and that just means that there are, instead of one row of pixels, there are three rows of pixels. And then again, the pro camera uses a collinear, and the, and the fusion uses a trilinear. So this, this again, is just kind of a, some background on, on what separates the, the camera models. The other really important thing, and you know, to understand is that really the 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 data rate of the cameras, so like the amount of image that they can produce per unit time, is pretty similar for all the cameras except the pro camera, which obviously is significantly higher um, data rate. 40 meg megapixels per second, meaning at the high end, 10,000 frames per second by 4,000 pixels. 
just to give you a sense of so that and that camera's been around for uh, quite a long time now. But that is well, does anyone remember? Anyone have who had a silver bullet? So does anyone remember the data rate of a silver bullet? It was four hundred K bytes per second. Okay. Four hundred kilobytes per second. So the, the pro camera has a data rate about 100 times, exactly 100 times actually, the old silver bullet. Okay, so, <clears throat> this is, this slide contains a fair amount of information and I'll try to, I'll try to give these to you uh, um, before you leave. But I try to present it in as simple a fashion as possible. <clears throat> This, in a nutshell, is the difference between a collinear sensor and a trilinear sensor. Okay, basically, what you have with a collinear sensor is the red, green, and blue photocytes are all stacked up on top of each other. Okay, and what the camera is doing is it's combining red, green, and blues to create the pixel that you see on your screen. So if you have, and so this would be in a 50100 or 50300, so the original Eastlink 2000 or the Pro camera. Okay. If you have one of these collinear cameras, then each one of these triplets, if you're in zoom 100, the sort of default mode, each one of these triplets is creating one pixel on your screen. So the way to think about it is that the light's coming in through the lens, it's falling on these pixels, filtering the red, green, and blue, and it's turning that into a pixel on your screen. <coughs> so the, the light, if you will, sort of the center of the pixel is always, in this case, in zoom 100, it's always the green pixel. Okay. These, just to give you a sense of scale, these pixels in a, um, in a pro camera, for example, are 10 microns, okay, which is, a micron is a, one thousandth of a millimeter. So, a lot of people don't really get the whole zoom percentage thing, but it's really important to understand in order to get around, get your head around the resolution issue, issue with pictures. So, the best way to explain it is that if you're in zoom fifty percent, okay, what's happening is that instead of just taking three of these red you know, this one sort of triplet of red, green, and blue to create the pixel on your screen, it's taking two adjacent ones, okay? And it's, it's taking all those together and using that to create a pixel on your screen. So the center of the photo site, really, sort of the, the, the center of that pixel, if you will, as far as, you know, if you draw like a circle around that, okay? That's sort of the center of that pixel now, instead of being there. So the effect of that is twofold, one of which is that it, creates effectively a wider angle. You know, it's like taking a hundred, if you had a hundred millimeter lens on your camera and you're running at, at zoom 100%, that's a hundred millimeter lens. If you're running zoom 50%, it's acting like a 50 millimeter lens. Okay? I mean, it's very, that's basically the, the, the way to think of it. It's, it's like a digital zoom. Okay? The other thing it's doing is it actually does essentially pull more light into that one pixel on your screen. Okay. And the best way to think about it is that there's a certain amount of light out there shining on your on the people that are going through your finish line. And if there's more area, more physical area on the sensor that's picked up, then you're going to get more light in the resulting picture. Okay. So there is some advantage, there is some light advantage to the wider angle zoom mode than there is some light disadvantage to the to the zoom to the 150, 200, 300% ones. Okay. So it's just something you need to think about when you're deciding whether or not to use it. We'll talk more about that later. So the zoom 300% is the other side of the, of the spectrum. And the way this works is it's actually in effect, in a pro camera, it's actually reusing pixels. Okay. So now, and I really wish I could look 